Hello everyone, today in our series of Docplex's KOL interviews, we have with us very eminent cardiothoracic surgeon Dr. M. R. Girinath, who heads the Department of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. He has been at the forefront in establishing coronary bypass surgery as a standardized and safe procedure in India and has been the part of first ever multi-organ transplant in India, heart, kidney, liver and cornea. With over four decades of experience in cardiac surgery, Dr. Girinath is a pioneer in cardiac surgery for infants, coronary bypass surgery, multivalve replacement and cardiac transplantation. He is the recipient of many prestigious awards including the Padma Bhushan, Dr. B.C. Roy National Award and the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Indian Association of Cardiovascular Thoracic Surgeons for his tremendous contribution to the field of cardiology. Sir, it is an honour for us to have you with us today. Dr. Girinath, you have been a first-hand witness to the changes in the arena of uh, heart and lung transplants in India over the years. What have been the significant milestones milestone so far and what is the way forward? See, I have been in the forefront of cardiac surgery right from the early days when cardiac surgery was being established in India. At that time, we were trying to standardize procedures and get uh, safe surgery into India. Uh, I started my career at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, where I worked under a very towering surgeon, Professor N. Gopinath, and then went on to have further training in New Zealand. I trained with Sir Brian Barrett Boyce, who is also one of the pioneering surgeons in cardiac surgery. When I came back, uh, for a while I worked in Mumbai. Um, but that was in a private hospital and uh, we were not able to do much. So I moved on to the railway hospital in Chennai. The railway hospital um, was a, a tremendous place because uh, we could get patients from all over the country and uh, we didn't have to look for patients. So we were able to do pioneering work in pediatric cardiac surgery, in valvular heart surgery and coronary bypass surgery. In fact, the first uh, uh, coronary bypass operation in the country was done at the railway hospital. Uh, in 1983, Dr. P.C. Reddy set up this Apollo hospital and he asked me whether I would like to head the unit. So I made my demands very clear. I said I need a first rate uh, facility and I need to bring my team with me because cardiac surgery is only teamwork. Without a team, a cardiac surgeon is at a total loss. So he agreed and we brought a team in from the railway hospital and we were able to do our first open heart operation at this hospital within three days of our moving in. And during the next uh, three months, uh, we did over a hundred cases, including infants. In fact, uh, one of the infants that we did was the doctor, of, uh, son of a pediatrician who had a very complex congenital heart anomaly and uh, he did well and he's today a pediatrician himself with postgraduate qualifications practicing in Surat. So that was how we started and we did our first uh, coronary bypass operation uh, within the first three months. And that patient is still alive and doing well. So that was the beginning. After that, things uh, accelerated. And we started doing as much as 1,000 operations a year. Uh, but more important than the 50,000 operations that we have done, we've been able to train a large number of uh, cardiac surgeons about 30 of them and they are now scattered all over the country doing excellent work. They are probably doing about 15% of the work that is being done in the country. So that is, I think, our most significant achievement. We were interested in heart transplants and we were preparing for it, but we had to wait for the law to be passed. Once the law came in, we now had to get things organized. And uh, towards the end of uh, 1995, we did our first heart transplant in a patient who was dying. 
and we just uh, managed to get a uh, donor who unfortunately died from a motor vehicle accident and we were able to harvest the heart, uh, the kidneys, the cornea, etc. And we did the first multi-organ transplantation in this country at that time. That man survived for 14 years. He was able to settle his family and uh, he did quite well actually. He used to be a constant visitor to the hospital and uh, one day he went to pick up his wife from the station and on the way back uh, he just dropped dead, probably had an, a rhythm disturbance. But after that uh, we were doing the occasional transplants but to combine uh, heart transplantation with a busy cardiac practice, doing nearly 1,000 to 1,500 uh, coronary bypass operations a year was proving to be very difficult. So I identified three young surgeons, Dr. Paul Ramesh, who trained in a transplant center in England, and Dr. Madan Kumar. And the three of them have now run the program very successfully. They have done to date 54 heart transplants, 57 lung transplants. They have uh, implanted uh, left ventricle assist devices. They have even had a patient who came from uh, Jordan, I think, who had a failing uh, implanted artificial heart, which they removed and replaced with a, a human heart. So these have been all the significant uh, uh, things that we've done in this hospital. So it's been a tremendous journey and we know that the Apollo Hospital Chennai has done the highest number of combined heart-lung transplants in India. So what are the survival rates of patients undergoing this transplant and what factors play an important role in this regard? See, first of all, you need a first-rate facility so that the transplanted uh, heart or lungs will not pick up infections. For that, uh, we have created a totally separate intensive care unit in this hospital, which is used only for transplantation, only for heart and heart-lung transplantation. And that, I think, is one of the essentials. You cannot manage these patients in the regular ICU. The bulk of our work is coronary bypass surgery. Now, we've done, I think, out of the nearly 50,000 operations that we have done, 37,000 have been coronary bypass operations. And of these, I think about 16,000 or 17,000 have been off-pump CABG. So that takes away most of our time. We also do a large number of valves. We used to do a lot of pediatric work, but now uh, we have a separate pediatric hospital. So we moved our pediatric work there, and one of our uh, associates, Dr. Neville Solomon, is doing a fantastic work there. He does close to 50 pediatric operations a month which is really, and the results are unbeatable. So I'm really quite proud of all that uh, we're doing in this hospital. What are your thoughts on the current scenario of don donor organ availability in India and how can we help improve this scenario? See, in Western countries, uh, there is a shortage of organs. In the US, as far as I know, it's only about 2,000 or 2,500 uh, hearts that are done per year. So that's why they are now moving on into areas like uh, LVADs. But LVADs are frightfully expensive for us. They cost upwards of a crore of rupees to purchase. And they are associated with a lot of problems like strokes. So that is an area which uh, we can't really move into in a big way. So we still have to rely on uh, donor organs. In Tamil Nadu, we are more fortunate than in other states. Organs are uh, more easily available here. Uh, in the initial phases, we used to have problems with uh, religious objections to donation of hearts. Uh, but now all that has settled down. People agree that uh, organs should be made available wherever possible. And <clears throat> so donor availability has not been as much a problem. In fact, the problem with transplantation is cost. Not only is the operation very expensive to do, 
you have to use a lot of imported uh, devices and uh, medicines uh, and all of those are expensive um, so there are not too many patients who can afford the surgery now everyone will tell you you should uh, make it cheaper and uh, make it available to a larger number of people. But uh, from my experience, I can say that if you try to compromise on safety, you're not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to compromise on safety, you have to stick to rigid uh, um, lines of management. And that's the only way to have good results. Thank you so much, Dr. Kirinath, for sharing your valuable time and knowledge with us. It was a pleasure for us to have you here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Happy Dogplexing!